Well, an earthquake in the morning and aftershocks ever since. What a perfect day to launch a YouTube channel called Unshaken. Today's earthquake in Salt Lake City was the area's worst in nearly 30 years, making headlines across the country and even showing up on Google Maps. Merchandise toppled off store shelves, which is surprising since so many shelves were already empty due to the panic over the spread of coronavirus. Even the Salt Lake Temple, in the midst of seismic renovations as we speak, saw its angel Moroni lose his trumpet, as if the voice of heaven itself were getting hard to hear above the noise. The Lord prophesied that all things would be in commotion, and surely men's hearts shall fail them, and so far 2020 seems to fit the bill. And those are only the physical things, as if it weren't enough to deal with the shaking of the ground from today's earthquake, and the shaking of our nerves in the midst of a global pandemic. Latter-day Saints are dealing with the shaking of faith and magnitudes that haven't been seen since Kirtland. It thus seems only fitting that Utah, first in the nation in stocking their pantries lately, is also first in the nation in Googling faith crisis. As people of faith, perhaps this isn't surprising. We take faith seriously, and therefore take faith crisis seriously as well. We know all too well the dangers of being shaken. In my case, this morning's earthquake and the aftershocks that have followed reminded me a little of home. You see, I've lived through tornadoes in Tennessee and hurricanes in Puerto Rico, but I grew up in California, and I remember my childhood earthquakes best. The first was a fast shaker, with windows rattling and water splashing over the sides of the pool. But what scared me most was not the earthquake itself, but my grandma's reaction to it. She freaked out, and that freaked me out. My second earthquake was a slow roller and woke me up in the middle of the night. I thought about standing in the doorway, but the sensation of bed surfing was just too cool. So I rode it out and went right back to sleep. I wasn't there for my third earthquake because I was a college freshman in Utah, but I soon found out the kind of catastrophic damage it caused to my hometown. In fact, a bishop in our stake used to commute to LA with a policeman friend of his. They would play leapfrog to pass the time, probably the only safe way to pass a cop. The bishop had just passed his friend on an overpass when he thought he'd blown a tire. Struggling to maintain control of his car, he looked into the rearview mirror and saw the freeway collapse behind him, sending his friend, Officer Clarence Wayne Dean, to his death. Scared grandmas and midnight bed surfing aside, shaking should always be taken seriously. For the past 20 years, I've been taking earthquakes more seriously, especially the spiritual kind. Shaken faith is one of the earthquakes in diverse places that's one of the defining signs of the times, and I feel drawn to help whomever I can. I've taught religion classes to youth and young adults for the last two decades, and I'm about to finish a PhD in American religious history from a Bible Belt Divinity School where I focused on anti-religious rhetoric. That's anti-Mormonism, anti-Semitism, anti-Catholicism, basically anything anti-faith and it's allowed me to work with a lot of people who are struggling spiritually. When we moved back to Utah, my wife reminded me of the work that needed to be done here. You study intellectual anti-Mormonism, she said, and you're going to the epicenter. The epicenter. She definitely chose an appropriate word. In the past few years, the time I've spent teaching in the classroom has probably been matched by time I spend working with people one-on-one, -on -one, answering questions, working through historical or doctrinal issues, trying to help people gain an unshaken faith. Knowing that my students aren't alone in this wrestle, I'm hoping to share with you some of the principles that I've learned. I read a book a week to try to keep up with things. Here are the stacks from 2019. Religious history and theology, Latter-day Saint history and doctrine, philosophy and literature, and lots of isms, secularism, skepticism, rationalism, atheism, intellectualism, and on and on. But the book I read most often is the scriptures, which has more power to fortify our faith than any other book I'm aware of. So for this channel, I plan to post videos that teach lessons from the scriptures, share insights into building faith and dealing with doubt, and help in navigating crises of faith. I don't pretend to have all the answers. Faith wouldn't be faith if we did. But I do have a profound belief in God, a deep love of Jesus Christ, and an abiding testimony of the restored gospel. More than anything, I want to provide a resounding yes to what I consider one of the most poignant questions the Savior ever asked. 
when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. It is my prayer and my goal to build faith, so I invite, invite you to join me as we strive to make our faith unshaken. As a YouTube rookie, I hope you'll bear with me, especially as I struggle to get the quality of the videos on par with the importance of the content. This is not a money-making venture, nor is it meant to be seen as an official LDS outlet. I'm simply a disciple of Jesus Christ, one who hopes to consecrate whatever gifts I've been given for the welfare of our souls. If you'd like to help me in these efforts, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Together, we can make the internet into something described in Hebrews chapter 12, a virtual cloud of witnesses. I'm Jared Halverson, and I thank you for joining me.